Hi everyone, so I'm here today to share a few cards that I made using some new products from Lawn Fawn's Valentine's 2019 release. So I picked these up at my local craft store yesterday and I was just so excited to start using them. So first, this is the Let's, Let's Toast stamp set and it's really adorable. There is a toaster, an avocado, a piece of toast, a Pop-Tart, some butter, and lots of great punny sayings. I also picked up the die and then the add-on Let's Toast pull tab add-on die so that um, we can make interactive cards and I'm gonna show you how to do that later on in this video. So this is what the Let's Toast stamp and die set looks like. I also picked up this Polka Heart backdrop um, die in landscape and I also use that a lot on these cards that you're going to see in this video. So let's jump right to it and get started with coloring in some of the images from, from the Let's Toast stamp set. So I'm adding in some footage that normally I, I don't use in my videos just because I've noticed that there have been a lot of people who are new to card making who have been watching my videos recently. So for some of these steps that you might not be familiar with, I thought at least for the next few videos, I would try to leave in some more of the steps just so that you can see what the whole process looks like. And this tool that I'm using now, it's called a mini Misty and it helps you when you're stamping. Um, so that if you don't get a good impression the first time, you're, you can stamp again. As you know, if you have a handheld block and you try to stamp twice, you're kind of relying on yourself to um, you know, hit the same spot twice. So sometimes it's useful to use the Misty for stamping. So, and usually if I'm stamping a lot of images at once, I'll use the Misty just because it's convenient. It's more convenient than sticking all the little images on small acrylic blocks. So to color in the butter, I'm using Y11, Y13, and then Y17. And I think these are the same colors that Lawn Fawn used in their introductory video for this, um, for the stamp set. And it actually, I mean, it's, it's a great combination for butter. For the avocado, I started with G20 and then I'm going to use G17 and then, y, I'm sorry, YG17 and YG13 um, as well. And then for the avocado pit, I'm gonna use E23, E27, and then just go back over that with E23. And I also added a tiny bit of E29 at the very far edges of the avocado pit just to give it a little bit of dimension and make it look interesting. For the outside of the avocado shell, I guess that's what it is, is that the or skin of the avocado, I'm using some YG markers and then a G29 marker around the very, very outer rim just to darken it up and make it stand apart from the inside of the avocado. For our toaster, I'm gonna use RV91 through RV99 to color in the toaster. And it's gonna give us this really, really nice, um, like light, dusty rose um, color. And this is a combination I don't use that often, but I just thought that it matched very, very nicely with the, with the greens and the avocado that it would make for a nice card. So that's why I pulled out this combination. And it's also fun to, you know, if you have your markers, you might as well use them, use some combinations that you don't often use because you never know what new, um, you know, what new colors you may find. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. And I am, the method that I'm using for coloring in the toaster is I'm just um, coloring in the edges darker and then I'm leaving the center lighter and this is a really big image so it's taking a lot of work to kind of get the to get the blend looking smooth but the good thing about a toaster is that it's metallic so when you look at it um, it's never really going to look smooth it's always going to have those kind of little um, ridges or reflections of, of light on it so I actually think that 
the fact that this is a big image and it's hard to blend that actually works to your advantage in getting the, the toaster to look more, um, more realistic. And actually this is like any stainless steel appliance that I have in my house that I like dust by myself ends up looking like this because <laughs> I'm just not that good at housework. So I'm just showing you how to refill a marker. So I wait until my markers get dry when the tip gets a little white and then I will add between 30 and 40 drops of the, um, the refill and I will, um, apply it on the chisel end. You never want to remove your brush tip from your Copics because you'll ruin it and you won't be able to use the brush tip again. But the chisel side comes out really, really easily. So that's how I refill my markers. And I just kind of, um, you know, hold the whole thing in a tissue so you don't get alcohol ink all over your hands. I would not um, use more than 30 or 40 drops on a dry marker because then it'll be overfill, overfilled and it'll drip all over your projects. Also, after I refill my markers, I will leave both um, cap ends off for a little bit just to allow the pressure to equalize. Otherwise, even if the marker is not overfilled, you can get some drippage on your product. So that's one thing to keep in mind with, with your refills. I also think that Copic sells like a special tool to use if you want to refill your markers, but I've never used that. I just kind of use my hands and tissues and I make sure only to... Um, remove the, the chisel nib. Okay, so getting back to the coloring. So for the metal, I'm using my toner grays from T0 to T6, with T6 being the darkest shade. And I'm just kind of blending everything out with my T2 now. I find that the toner grays are really, really good for metal, but honestly, any of the grays in the Copic family will do. For the bread, we're going to use E41 and E43. Um, other good combinations for the bread would be E50 and E53, or E30, E31, and E35. Those all make really, really nice colors for bread, I found. And then I'm not going to do it here, but another fun thing to do when you're making the bread is once you have your blend done, go back over the edges with the darkest marker that you're using and just kind of dot it, make like tiny little dots here and there. Um, and then when you look back at it, it's gonna look like the little, the little craters or the little bubbles that, um, that we see in our bread, the crumb of the bread, I guess that's what it's called. So some of the little toasts that we'll use later on in the video will have that effect, but I didn't do it here because I hadn't thought of it, frankly, at this point, this early on in my, um, in my just playing with this stamp set. Okay, for the Pop-Tart, I'm gonna use E30, E31, and E35. And like I said, the for the same colors that look really, really good for the toast will look good for the edges of the Pop-Tart. And if you wanna make a chocolate Pop-Tart, which we will do a couple of those later, then I would just use the darker, your mid-tone and your, your darkest color instead of using light and mid-tone or light mid-tone and dark. Um, I guess this one is a strawberry Pop-Tart that we're making, so I'm using RV52 and RV55. And then I'm just gonna blend that all out with my RV52. And then an RV00 in the, in the very center. Now I'm just um, getting out the dies and I I cut everything off screen and I separated out the dies off screen as well. So I have pre-cut all my paper. So I'm using some pattern paper from the Lawn Fawn Rainbow collection that I think this was released last year. And I just attached that to my A2 size card base. Then I use the Polka Heart die, the new one, and I cut off about an inch at the end and I just apply that over the card base. I stamp the sentiment using Sugar Plum um, ink by Lawn Fawn, and then I just um, cut up the sentiment into little, little strips of paper so that we have some flexibility when we're deciding where to put our sentiment on the card. I'm gonna use a little smiley faces from the stamp set to stamp smiley faces on the toast and the avocado 
the great thing about this stamp set is that there are smiley faces in all different sizes. So there's one big enough for the toaster, a medium sized one for the toast and the avocado and the pop tart, and then a really tiny smiley face for the little pat of butter. Um, and we'll see that a little bit later on. So these hearts are from the Stitch Hearts collection that was released last Valentine's Day by Lawn Fawn. And I'm using some of their gingham paper as well um, to cut out the heart. And then I'm just arranging my little images onto the card base and figuring out where I want my sentiment to go. And you know, another way to do this, you could have also left the whole sentiment on one strip of paper, but I had originally thought I might um, stack the sentiment along the left side of the card. Um, but I actually like the way that this looks as well. It's just a little bit different, a little interesting. So now I'm just applying the rest of the images to the card base, including our cute little toast and avocado couple. And then we are going to finish the scene off by adding some hearts. And these hearts I'm using from the Sweet Friends stamp set. I originally used the heart stamp in the kit or in the stamp set, the Let's Toast stamp set. I didn't like it, so I just got out my favorite little trio heart um, set from, the, um, from last year's Lawn Fawn release, the Sweet Friends one. Then we're just gonna put glossy accents on the hearts on the little avocado pit and that is going to do it for this first card. So there it is. It says, I love you. You're the avocado to my toast. Just adorable. Okay, now we're going to move on to an interactive card using the pull, pull tab add-on die. So I use the portrait polka dot um, die on some guava card stock and then underneath that is some yellow pattern paper from the Knit Picky collection. Instead of coloring in the toaster, we're gonna to use some paper and do some, um, pa some pattern paper and do some paper um, piecing. That was a little bit of a tongue twister. And this is from the Lawn Fawn Gingham collection paper pad. And we're gonna do a double pull tab. So um, yeah, so this is kind of like the extreme version of of the card, but what I found was that to use the pull tab on one card, it's kind of hard to fill up a, an A2 size card. So if you are going to use this, I would just use, um, I would maybe make a four bar card size. Um, all right, I guess I should tell you what I'm doing here. So now I'm just showing you what the parts to the interactive mechanism are and how to place them. There is the little rounded slot that we're gonna put on the toaster. Um, and so that's so that we have a place for our little interactive piece of toast to hang out. And here I'm just trying to figure out where I want to place my toasters on the page. And then I'm gonna draw some little guides for myself so that I know um, where they're gonna go because we're gonna to have to add some die cuts onto these sections as well for the interact interactive mechanism. So I'm just kind of lining up where I'm going to put the, um, the die, the, the little slot die, which is how we're gonna move our little piece of toast or our pop tart up and down the card. And I just made sure to mark where the top of my toaster is. That's where the top of the, of the, um, the, the slot die is. And then I am using another die in the set to um, make the little slot for the, for the pull tab to go along the top of the card. So here we go. I've done one side and the die was good. It was able to cut through both the pattern paper and the card stock. Um, and now we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm just applying my slot die to where um, our toaster is going to sit and then I'm going to put the other pull tab die along the top so we can cut a little notch. Um, now I'm just showing you what um, that little notch die looks like in the toaster. So you can see it's rounded and that's where the little toast is going to go. Um, this one did not cut all the way through so I'm just using my tool in one to kind of poke it out. 
All right, so this part, watch closely. This is the interactive mechanism and you're going to fold it inwards and then outwards. Inwards and then outwards. And then when you're done, it's gonna create what actually looks like a little piece of toast on the front, right? And then we're going to use our bone folder to make sure our creases are nice and good. And then we're going to thread this piece through the back of our card panel. Okay, so just watch what I'm doing here. So you're just gonna take both of the little flaps and thread them through. And now you have your little interactive mechanism that is all working. And I'm just showing you what it looks like front and back. And that is where the little toast or the little pop tart's gonna go. So before we make our pop tart all interactive, let's dress her up and add a little smiley face, a little bow for her hair, and then maybe put some makeup on her cheeks and give her a few freckles as well. And then once her face is all done, then, it, then we can put her on the card. Um, but first, we're going to attach, this is another part of the interactive piece, and this is just gonna hold our little pull tab in place. So I'm just folding it, and then it is going to attach to the back of the card base, and our pull tab is gonna slide along it. So the only place you wanna put tape to start is on the part of the pull tab that is going to be touching the card base just to attach it, nowhere else on the inside of the, of the pull tab. So I'm just placing my little um, piece of paper and then we're going to add a piece of tape along the small notch and then we're gonna fold the large notch over the small notch. And now we have a little pull tab mechanism that is held in place so it won't kind of go to the left or the right when the recipient is trying to use it. And just now I'm going to cut off the excess that I don't need. So you want to put it all the way in the down position when you do that and then make it even with the top of the card. Or if you want your pull tab sticking out, that's fine too. It could stick out. I just wanted mine to be um, level with the top of the card. This is another die that comes in the set. And this is just going to, um, it's a little handle so that your recipient nose to pull upwards. It has a little arrow on it. Okay, so now let's attach our Pop-Tart to our interactive mechanism. The important thing here is you want to make sure that the tape does not go higher than the pull tab mechanism it's going to be sitting on because if it's higher it'll stick to the card stock, the card panel, and then it won't work. So you just want to only put tape about halfway from the bottom to the middle of the little Pop-Tart or toast. Okay, so as you can see, we had a little issue the first time. <laughs> um, the first time I used one layer of foam tape to attach my toaster and that didn't work. It just didn't give the Pop-Tart enough room to move. So then I had to rip it off and start over and apply two layers of foam tape. And don't worry, we're gonna do this another time. You'll get to see the whole process done the right way. So in the process of tearing off my little toaster, it was wounded in battle, but we're gonna save it. We are just going to put a little heart um, right on top of the boo-boo. So we're gonna like kiss it, make it better. And then no one will ever know that um, that little part of the toaster tore. So instead of starting over and cutting out a new toaster, I was like, this little toaster wants to be part of this card, so we'll just fix them up. And it actually, I like how those little hearts look on the side too. Um, it ended up being like a really, really cute design element that I wouldn't have thought of if we didn't have that issue. Um, so now I'm just working on the interactive mechanism for the second card. Doing the same exact thing. Um, we're gonna just thread it through the back again, like we did the first time. And then we're gonna make sure that it works. And for this one, what are we doing here? Now um, I am just going to, this time I just drew where I wanted my um, little track to go because the first time I felt it was a little bit off center. So this time I just 
um, you know, drew myself some guides so I knew where to put my track. So I'm just going to cut off the excess again. And then we're going to apply the little handle, the same that we did the first time. This time using um, ballet slippers cardstock for the handle. The other handle is mermaid cardstock by Lan Fawn. And so even though there's lots of smiley faces in the Let's Toast stamp set, I wanted one of my little toasts to have a mustache. So I just grabbed the little mustache smiley face from the Love You A Latte stamp set that was just released this. Um, Christmas and then I stamped it with black VersaFine ink, add a little bow tie to our little boy toast and then we're going to just attach him to the other interactive mechanism. So now we are going to use two layers of foam tape and you want to make sure that they're really really thin strips. These are about one eighth of an inch each because if they're wider then they'll hit into the toast and your interactive mechanism won't work. So we're just going to thread the piece of toast through the toaster, just like I just did, and then attach it and then make sure our pull tab works. And it does. But one thing I noticed was that um, the pull tab needed some reinforcement. And this is something I recommend that you do at home um, just because the more that you use the pull tab, it could bend. Um, and then it'll stop working and you won't be able to fix it because the card panel will be attached to a card base. So just reinforce it by um, adding about a quarter of an inch strip of thick card stock behind the pull tab mechanism and underneath the track. And then this will make your pull tab nice and sturdy so it should hold up um, for a long time. And even if you know, you're making a little card for a child, like. I'm going to be doing with this stamp set. I have a niece and nephew that are seven and eight and they just love these interactive cards. So I wanted to make sure they could play with them for a long time. I'm going to stamp some butter onto our piece of toast with a little butter stamp that's in the kit, not the kit, the stamp set. And I used butter ink by Lawn Fawn. It was a little bit light. So I'm just going over the little pat of butter or the butter stain or the melted butter blob whatever you want to call it, with some Copic markers. And we're going to add a smiley face to the toast and then the tiny little smiley face to the pat of butter and then attach the toast to our toaster. Add the little piece of butter right next to him. And then we're going to start working on the other side. So I just stamped a face on my little pop tart and I'm just darkening up her eyelashes and her smile with a black Copic multi-liner pen, which is a really good tool to have around. If you don't, I recommend getting a black multi-liner in 0.5 and 0.3. So this way, if you ever stamp an image and it's too light in some areas or, or you only stamp half of it, instead of having to go and restamp the image, you can just fill in the missing lines with a Copic multi-liner. So that's what I do often if I have uh, a stamped image that just doesn't come out perfect. I will um, fill in the missing lines with my multi-liner and then no one will ever know the difference. Okay, so now we're gonna just put, add a little piece of butter to this Pop-Tart as well. Um, and then we're going to attach the whole card panel to an A2 size card base. I'm popping this up on two layers of foam tape just because our interactive mechanism in the back is pretty thick. So I wanted to make sure that it didn't get stuck um, and it had enough room to kind of freely move around. And then I stamped a sentiment from the kit that says popping up to say, you're my butter half. So cute. Um, and I'm just trying to figure out now where to place the sentiment on the card and I think I figured it out. And now I'm just attaching the sentiment. And I just used some white Lawn Fawn embossing powder to stamp the sentiment on black licorice cardstock. Now I'm just adding in the little, um, some little arrows into the pull tab. You didn't need to do that. It would have been fine to leave it as it was, but I just thought it would be cute to um, 
to, to add in the two little arrows. And now we're going to stamp a whole bunch of, not stamp, um, but apply a whole bunch of little hearts to, um, to the card, just to, just to finish it. And these hearts are from the Sweet Friends stamp set that was released last Valentine's Day. And it's a little trio of hearts and there's a large heart, a medium heart, and a small heart. And I just um, stamped it several times and then just colored them in with different Copic markers and the blue green family and then the like coral family. So the coral ones are R20, R22, and R24. The blue greens are, I used a lot of different blue green combinations for this. So BG45 and 49, BG53 and 57, BG00 um, zero, zero, and no, BG000 zero, 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 and BG02. I think BG02 and BG05 just, and they all kind of ended up looking somewhat the same. So I don't know that I needed to do all that, but I was having fun playing with my blue green markers. And then once I have everything placed, I am just going to pick them up with my jewel picker and add some glue behind them and then just make sure that they're stuck on good and then just coat everything with some glossy accents and then that is going to complete the card. And before I go, I just wanna share a few other cards that I made with this stamp set. So here is a scene card that I made using Copic markers and the Let's Toast stamp set and then some images from a couple of other previously released Lawn Fawn sets. So this is a kitchen counter and I thought it would be nice to have a brick backsplash with a little window um, above the scene with a little, um, a little birdie and her little mouse friend and they're standing outside in a snowstorm and they're just having the time of their lives. And underneath we have our warm cozy house with our little toaster and our pop tart and our avocado and it says happy heart day a toast to us. So if there's any interest in learning how to go through all the steps to make this card let me know and I can post a separate video. Um, in particular, I think I had a, a lot of fun making the bricks and I would love to show that technique to you if anyone is interested. And then let's move on to the next card. And this card says, I love you with all my tart. And I just use my Copic markers to color in for the little pop tarts. And I use some mermaid card stock behind the um, polka heart die to make this background and then I just used a whole bunch of little hearts from the Sweet Friends stamp set. This is the first card that I made with the stamp set. It says popping up to say, I love you with all my tart. And this is what it looks like when the mechanism is down. And then this is what it looks like when you pull up the, um, the pull tab. And I use some gingham lawn fawn paper as well with that one. And then finally, let's take one last look at the two cards that we made in this video. This is the you're the avocado to my toast. And then the very cute popping up to say you're my butter half with our little pop tarts and little pieces of toast. So those are all the cards that I have for you today. I have some good news. If you stuck around to the end of this video, um, I have an extra let's toast stamp and die set and interactive pull tab die and I would love to give it to one of you. So if you would like a chance to join the raffle to win the stamp and die set, then just leave me a comment under this video and I will announce the winner um, in before the end of the new year. All right, have a great weekend everyone or a great week depending on when you're tuning in and I will see you again in the next video.